the the D performance last episode and and the D is being generous. Like it could very easily be a failing grade. Yeah. But I'm being generous and I'm giving these guys a D. Those two knuckleheads who come off of the transport on Eros with Thomas Jane, those two I extras. I am so those guys are the hold on a second. worst. Hold on a second. Those I, guys are the worst. I am so pissed off that we missed this great moment <laughs> because there was a day where I guess security was <laughs> slacking off around set or whatever. Yeah. But there were two, there was a motley crew. That stumbled their way into just the stumbled set. In, just stumbled in. Just stumbled in. Yeah. And, and it's, and, and it's uh, James S.A. Corey. And it, yeah. it's, if you take Ty and Frank, if you take Ty Frank and uh, Daniel Abraham and you slam them together, they turn into Jason Momoa. So, yeah, that's it, true. It, to, be, to be James S.A. Corey. So, if you split them apart, it's Ty Frank and, and Daniel Abraham. And they had a cameo. Was it, was it last one? Or, no, it was the one before last. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't. It was episode eight. Excuse me. It was I'm episode sorry. eight. It was episode yeah. Eight. So, but uh, that's a really cool moment to have the auth authors of the book be uh, extras in there. And Ty, I got to say, man, your belter, your belter swagger was on. Was on, man. Uh, so, I'm playing the most broke ass belter that has ever lived. He doesn't even have luggage. He's got a ratty ass, dirty stained jacket on. He doesn't even have any luggage. Yeah. His hair's all fucked up. He's just looking terrible. That guy. Yeah. That guy had a rough weekend. You know what your subtext is in that scene? Uh. It's like your subtext is is like I don't know how they talked me into doing this, and I just want to get off of camera as soon as I possibly can. Because yep. you know you you you've watched enough uh, filmmaking to know the banana walk, right? The banana walk is where you. You yeah, kind of edge yeah. out, you curve out, yeah. so you extend your time in the frame, and then you come yeah. back as you get there. So a lot of actors, they know the tricks of when they're walking, whatever, to stay in frame longer. Now, if you take a direct route to where you want to go, you come off camera so much faster because of the distance between where you are yep. on camera. And Ty, when he walks in there, he's head straight down and looks and beelines off camera, and, and he's being shy. He's being shy. He's not giving us all we want to see. Here, here's some, here's, you know, we're jumping back two episodes. Uh, this is the moment where we lose the rest of our podcast audience because we're so bad at this. But, but Daniel, uh, they gave him a cup, like a little coffee cup. So, so I walk off the ship with no luggage at all. Daniel, the only luggage he's got is a coffee cup, which is perfect. <laughs> Perfect for Daniel and I. But the other thing is, he kept fucking the scene up. So me, my, my extra game is on point. Like, I know where I'm starting. I know where my, I know how to hit my mark, and I know where I'm going. Daniel kept looking into the lens. No, he really? Fucked up, he fucked up like two Fuck or three things. Fucking Daniel, get out. Come such, on. Such an amateur. Such an amateur. Such an amateur. An amateur. You know, Just, that... That, that's He's looking right down the barrel, man. Because he because he doesn't spend any time on set. You can't get his ass out of New Mexico, right? You know. So if he was on set, he would know you don't look down the barrel, man. You don't look down. You don't the, look down the, the, the barrel. The but barrel. he did it like two or three times. But can I tell you my other uh, my other little tidbit about that? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've I've never been an extra before. But hold on. But wait before you do that. Before you okay. go on. Yeah. I do think it's hilarious that you're coming off this transport. Everybody else has got bags. Everybody else got shit. And y'all don't got yeah. shit. We don't have <laughs> shit. <laughs> you don't carry nothing. Daniel Dude. has a coffee cup. That's it, man. He brought that coffee cup with him from series, man. And what, here's what I want to know is why these two broke-ass guys were on series and needed to get back to Eros, man. These two guys are broke as fuck. They show up on Eros, which is like a slum. I guess they're like homeless. They're like we no, were riding the rails. No, or maybe something. you guys were like at the bottom of the ship, like on the Titanic, how like DiCaprio and all his guys had, oh, had yeah, to stay yeah. on the bottom of the ship, and it was like you were just there to just to work, and, the, and that you were working. Uh, we were for like your shoveling transport. coal in the bottom <laughs> of the ship, <laughs> shoveling coal in a nuclear <laughs> in a nuclear engine ship. You're shoveling coal. We're just uh, shoveling coal, man. <laughs> wrong, wrong century, buddy. Wrong century. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've, I've never been an extra before. You know, obviously I've been in extra casting sessions, like where, you know, we talk to the extras casting people, but I don't know much about the work of being an extra. Right. Um, and this was my first real exposure to that. So I learned some things. And one of the things I learned is professional extras. That's a, re that's a real job. I mean, there are people who oh, yeah. they're living being professional extras. They're very good at it. Yeah. Um, it's like a real job. I mean, you, you, people want to like bash extras, but it's a hard are, job. It's a hard job. It's a super valuable part of filming. Give the extras credit. They do a hard job and they and when you find good extras, it's such a blessing. It makes it makes the shot better. So anyway, I'm not taking anything away from being an extra. Extras are awesome. But there's a hierarchy 
in the extras. Like there, there's like this whole internal power struggle with the extras that who gets to be on camera, who gets to be on camera longer. You're fighting, you're fighting for camera time if you're an extra, right? And I learned this the hard way. So the director says, hey, you guys, I want to make sure you get featured in this shot. So why don't the two of you flank Thomas Jane? Because we know the camera is going to be on Tom. So flank Thomas Jane. As he's walking up to the board to see where the Anubis is, you two just peel off to the left and walk off camera. That way you'll definitely be in the shot. And we're like, oh, okay, so we're just going to do what the director tells us to do. What I didn't know is that pisses extras off because they're like, who the fuck are these motherfuckers coming in, taking pay, all this camera I paid time? my dues. I paid my dues to get this shot and you're coming in here, you're snatching my camera time, right? I didn't know that. So there's this one tiny little woman extra. She must, she's like my wife's size. So she's probably like five, two or something. Tiny little person. I can tell she's pissed about all this. Cause we're talking, we're talking to Tom. Extras don't talk to core cast. You don't do that, right? Extras don't, you don't cross that line. And I don't know why that is, but it's, it seems to be a thing. So we're standing there talking to Thomas. She's shooting me dagger eyes. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, the extras don't talk to Thomas. And then when the director comes over and gives us specific direction, Extras don't get direction from the director. Extras get direction from the third AD. So, so the third's telling all the other extras what to do. The director walks over and talks to us directly. And is like, here's what I want you to do. She's shooting dagger eyes at me again. Like, what the fuck? Who the fuck are you guys, right? So we start, we do the first take. I'm walking forward. She body blocks me. She darts in front of me and, and stops and blocks me out of the shot and then, oh, and then takes my spot. And so, oh, you know, she she had a, she had a, a, a an experienced extra move on your ass. She had a move, man. That's the she block fucking, and pick. She, <laughs> she body blocked me out of the shot. So Bill, the director, comes over and he goes, uh, "Ty, I want to make sure you're next to next to Thomas when you know we where, where were you?" And I'm like, and I didn't want to rat her out, so I'm like, "Oh yeah, I I I messed it up." So I go back. We're doing the shot again. She tries to do it again, but this time I know you, what she's doing. And you checked her. I checked, you checked her. her. I checked her into the boards, man. Like, and I'm off camera when I'm doing it because it's before you turn that corner. So mm -hmm. there was like, we walked out a hallway. And you then put you her the in the boards. I, I put her in the boards, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I outweigh her by like probably 80 pounds. So I, I, I body checked her into the boards. Daniel fucked that take up because he looked into the lens. <laughs> so we had to do it again. But I'm, I'm going to tell you this. She smartened up. The third time she did not try to body, she did not try to check me. She knew what was going to happen. So then she just kind of walked behind and to the side of me. So she got smart. I don't know if she wound up in the final shot or not, but there was this whole like unspoken thing you know going what? on between you the just, two of us. You just told like a, a one act about <laughs> and it, it, a, a one act about what it is to be. That would be a fun to be an extra. To be an extra is and it has like parallels to prison, right? Like you. Right. You got to learn the rules. It's prison and, rules and, out and, there, man. And, and it's prison rules. And if they try to punk you, you cannot be punked. You got you, you got to put them. Punked. You got to put them in the boards. You got to put them in the boards. If I let her do that to me, yeah. from then on, every extra out there is selling me for cigarettes. 